My name is Anthony Garrico. I am the executive director at the Oxford Arts Alliance here in Oxford, Pennsylvania. Well, not here. I'm in um, uh, Delaware right now. Um, but thank you all for joining us from across the country. Uh, we are we are so pleased to uh, be hosting our eighth annual National Buried Exhibition and to have Kyle as our juror this year. Um, I'm going to pass it off to our brand new art director, Miguel, uh, and uh, just have him uh, introduce himself and introduce the show. All right, thank you guys for coming in. Um, and I also apologize if um, you have a hard time hearing me. I'm just starting to get sick, so I'm all nasally and gross. Um, but um, if you haven't, um, our juror is, is um, Kyle Staver. And if you didn't get around to reading her um, bio or anything, uh, just a brief uh, introduction. Um, she obtained her BFA from the Minneapolis College of Art and Design and her MFA from um, Yale. Um, she's also a Guggenheim Fellow and uh, currently represented by the Circer Gallery. Um, mm -hmm. Am I pronouncing that right? No, that's not right. I'm, I'm not represented by the Zurcher Gallery. I, I'm represented by um, Half Gallery. Oh, okay. The half okay. Gallery, I apologize for that. Mm -hmm. um, and um, yeah, so um, I was able to give her a, a little tour of the work um, yesterday. So um, it should be very exciting to hear um, what you guys have to say. And thank you for welcoming into the, uh, into the you. Alliance as the new um, coordinator. Thank you. Um, I've, I've done a, I, when, when I was a, um, you know, a couple of years ago, I, I used to apply for a lot of um, juried shows. And, um, you know, I always wondered how that, that worked. And if I didn't get in, I, I felt really crappy. And um, if I did get in, I was, I was thrilled. But, you know, being on the other side of it, I just, I just thought you guys might want to know that every juror, um, you, you know, you, you, you're looking at maybe, maybe 150 50 images. And there's, as I was telling Miguel yesterday, there are like four or five different shows that I could have put together. There was no work that was um, excluded because it wasn't, um, you know, good work. I, I really want, want that um, made very clear that this was a spectacular group of images to look at. Sometimes when you do this, um, it, it can get, you know, daunting because you, you, you just don't know what to do with, with the work or how to put together a, a show that will be exciting and, and strong. But that wasn't the case with this. So one of the things that um, I started as I was going through again and again, you know, when I begin to, to put your show together, I just go through, you know, you know, like go through the images and, and some things start to, to jump out, some relationships start to jump out. I saw a lot of butterflies, to, to, you know, a lot of, um, a lot of funky, funny, there was a spider, um, there were monsters and, um, you know, that delighted me. Uh, of course, I like monsters and spiders and things like that. And so as I started to go through, th there was this kind of arch that was going through of, of almost like um, almost like fantasy. Do, do, do you know they were they were representational for the most part, but they had a kind of um, you know playfulness, uh, kind of anthropomorphic um, sensibility and and I just started to pull pull that together. Do, do you know? Um, I love that when you walk into, is the spider maker here? Yeah, that you walk into the spider. I, I think that's hilarious. Um, so there were, there were wonderful, like again, 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 I just want this made clear. There were wonderful paintings that, that just couldn't be on this bus, okay? But they could have been, I could have gone, I could have not had a marguerite on the beach and wanted it a somber, you know, kind of maybe more, more, um, more adult. Um, <laughs> but I liked, I liked the sense of playfulness and the, and the painterliness of um, the, the arc that I started to get going. So there, there were, um, there were lots of, lots of relationships I started to see. And again, I flicked them, flicked through again, mm -hmm. and, again and it got it tighter and tighter until it became like a gang. 
it, you know, it was it was less about each one of you individually um, than how you they were all playing well together, and that's um, so you know the next show you go to. Um, be sure and look at, and if you don't get into a jury show, be sure and look at the show because, you know, it might be um, all abstract or, you know, it might have a, a different tenor to it. And, and then it's not about the quality of your work. It's, it's just about the, you know, the arc that the, the chooser is, has chosen to follow. Does that, does that make sense? Um, yeah. I, I, like, I like group shows. Um, but, but I know that it can be really, really painful. And, and to tell you the truth, um, I'm not a big fan of, of prizes because I think um, one of the problems that we have as a community is competition, do, do you know? Um, and I, I thought you were all spectacular, uh, but, but they did ask me to make a choice and I made a choice and that's, those are the four that I chose, but um, it, it's, yeah. <laughs> I just think that's that's hard when you're trying to build a community. To, to you know to have a winner and you know, to get into a show and it's terrific and you weren't. But um, I just thought I thought the quality of the show was was really top 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 shelf. Um, and when Miguel walked me through it, I thought he hung it beautifully. Do, do you know? I, I I usually don't do this unless I can hang the show because such a big part of it is. Those those relationships um, that that started to come from for me, and you know the other thing when 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 Miguel was walking it through, you guys all included the sizes of things, and I know that, but but, um, but you see them, you think I had no idea. Do, do, do you know what I mean? Like it's this big, you know, or it's it's huge. So, but Miguel did a beautiful job, and I think the show hung together well. Um, I hope you guys felt the same way. Um, what else can I tell you? Yeah. Sorry, looking for my my microphone there. Um, real quick, is there a way we could, those of us who were unable to attend, I wanted so much to see the gallery and how everything kind of flowed together. Is there a way maybe we could get maybe shots or something? Or um, I, mean, I know it's like a video or something yeah a video or maybe a panoramic or yeah i can i'd be happy yeah i'd be happy to go uh on tuesday um okay. this week i can go around the gallery and do in the past we've definitely done that um and just take a quick uh a video kind of lap around i was just watching formula one just a quick lap around the uh gallery space and then a couple stills um to show uh what the what the work looks like in the in the space Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, I would love to see that because everything seemed to sync up pretty well. And in, in what I was going through when I found out that I was included, which I thought was wonderful. Thank you. Um, but it was like, wow, this is really there. There was a definite similarity in my mind on how you chose these. So I was like, oh, I wonder what this looks like. And unfortunately, I was not able to go because I'm replacing windows on my house. So that'll do it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, sorry to interrupt. No, I think that's I think I think a, a film of it. It was really helpful. To, to walk through. You've got a great cat in back of you. <laughs> I know this is, I'm gonna be obsessed with your cat. But it was, it was, it was, um, it was helpful to see, see the, the, the walkthrough. Um, what else, what, what surprised me? Um, um, lots of things, just how, how strong the relationships were that that was that was a, a really wonderful surprise. Um, I didn't know that that one of the paintings needed three D glasses. That was that was a surprise. Mm. So I'm all I'm all bummed out that I didn't get to see it in with three D glasses. Is he here? No. Um, it it doesn't look like he's. Um... He's on okay. in here, but uh, his name is, I uh, believe, Jonathan West. Yeah. You, do you know, the other thing I want you guys to know is I didn't look at your names. Um, I just, I, I, I didn't, I didn't look at, and I actually know Jonathan. So when I, when I saw that, but that was a, that was a pleasant surprise, but that he had 3D glasses. That, so I'm, I'm really bummed that I don't know what that painting looks like. Is it really different when, when you see it with the 3D glasses, anyone who's seen it? 
it's not super super different but it definitely um allows you to experience the painting um differently sure. um just because it's also like a little bit unexpected hey, to, to wear uh who said glasses hi. with it yeah okay somebody just said kyle i said okay. kyle ernie hi oh hi how are you i'm good how are Karen. you hi kyle hey. hi <laughs> this is very fun so um that was a surprise um that uh, you know a couple i didn't the the butterfly wings the the big blue ones who did those it's okay um, i i didn't i had no idea that i could actually wear them you mean they, they're that <laughs> that was that was a surprise and then there were some that wait which one's the one that was really small i was like oh that's yeah, uh, Mindy, so is, is Mindy oh. here? Mindy, I didn't know that your painting was that big. It's yeah, that was a, that was a nice surprise. I know you told me, but you know, this is actually an issue for me. Oh, oh. one second. What was what do you mean an issue for you? One sec, computer issues. One sec, computer issues. One sec. No, I know I had coffee, but I did not have that much coffee. No, I <laughs> okay. okay. It's an issue? How so? Tell me. Um, Okay, sorry about that. Wow. Um, it's an issue because I really love what you said about building a community and not having competition. And I honestly am really concerned about hogging up so much wall space Ooh. in a group show. And, and also about my paintings are about climate and it is an era of shrinking resources. So to be making four and six foot paintings in an era of shrinking resources, in my opinion, doesn't really make sense for me to be doing, but the images I wanna make, I physically can't make them smaller. Like I can't get the brush in there. So this is where the work has led me. So this is what I'm doing, but yeah. I really do have qualms and reservations about it. And it, believe me, if I could do it smaller, I would, but I, I can't. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so that's why I'm, it's so nice to hear you say it's a pleasant surprise. Cause I'm no, just like, oh my God, I'm taking up so much space. What was and the I don't wanna hog all the space. No, you, so anyway. You, you didn't, you know, if, if it was all dinky paintings, it would be, you know, a dinky painting show. <laughs> you need, um, you need guns in there. What was the other one? What other one that was surprised was the sculpture has a bottom. Um, it's Nick, is Nick here? No, okay, Nick, Nick has an underside. You know, you, it's like you're underwater when, when you see this. Miguel actually showed that to me. So that was that was a surprise because I'm looking at it right here and this is the image I saw and it doesn't it doesn't look can you see that? I don't know that that's not gonna work. Okay. Okay. Um, I'll I'll bring it up on the screen in just a moment. Okay. Um I like that the lead off painting was Jan's. Jan is Jan here? No, you know, you guys are here. Okay. I'm mm -hmm. I'm just walking through the Kristen? Nice. Oh, okay. Um, Sam Kelly, where are you guys? <laughs> Forget about it. Forget about it. <laughs> Forget about it. Yeah. And, um, well, Ariel. No. Ar oh, hi. 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 That's Thank a goofy. You. That's a goofy. Yeah, that's a goofy painting. Up. Uh, that was, that was a big hit. When I was in California drinking margaritas, picking out the things, I ran it by the people that I was with and um, they were really loving this show, right? But they, they, they saw your painting time out and they couldn't figure out if it was 3D or not. Yeah, I think that's what's um, so much fun about painting little boxes is trying to make it seem like you're sort of in, in the room with it or, or are you, you know, so um, 
yeah, thank you. I'm honored to be a part of the show. And um, yeah, no, it was it was it was great. That was a goofy painting. And then Charles, Kong, Charles, are you there? Is Charles Charles gone fishing? Charles gone. He's not here. Okay, we're not talking about people who aren't here. Forget about it. Forget about it. <laughs> okay. Um, the other one that was a big surprise when I saw it on the wall was Errol Cole. Errol Cole. Are you here? No, where are you? Okay. Um, Rachel Walker? No. Hmm. Let's see. Then one that, Patricia? Patricia? That was the kinkiest still life I've ever seen. You know, <laughs> like, well, mercy, um, but it was funny. Do, do you know what I mean? It had a it it had a playful playfulness. Um, they just kept scoffing. Yeah, it just <laughs> you know, poor hairs. They they've been mishandled and misused from time immemorial. Um, they're just you know sometimes a pair is just a pair, right? Um, let's see, so much fun to look at these again. Trophy, Tina? You there? I can't, no, okay. Butterfly, butterfly. Well, ask me questions, because is Scott here? Scott, you very strange painter that I liked. I liked this. Did you guys see this one? You, you, right. Pyramids and running people. That was pretty fun. I have a question. Um, if, yeah, ask me a question. I'm, I'm Catherine. Uh, I have been in the Oxford show a couple of times. I'm really grateful to be included again. But I, I think this is the first time that you as the juror is act, is an artist who actually makes art. You know, is, I think the last time the juror, juror was a curator or gallery owner or something. So I'm curious if the how your own work is either um, influences your decisions or if your work uh, in, is yeah. informed I mean, or any connection? <laughs> yeah. do, you, do you know, when I when I visit artists' studios and I talk about their work, do, do you know? It's it's like a continue, I, I walk out of my studio, walk into your studio, and you know, we're all selfish gets. I'm kind of, and so I'm, I'm looking for, um, you know, I identify uh, with sensibilities that I share. I, um, I identify with problems that I share with, you, you know, like if I'm in your studio. So, yeah. and I, I'm always really careful to tell the people that I'm talking to, look, the next person that walks in is gonna tell you something completely different or the next juror you have is gonna make a, a very different, you know, of course it's my sensibility, do, do you know? Um, yeah. I like, I like the, um, you know, I like playful, um, but, but sturdy paintings. You know, playful but sturdy paintings. Um, you know that 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 matters to me. So yeah, yeah. My what I do informs everything. You know the way I look, the way I talk. Um, you know the connections that I make. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah, yeah. Does somebody else have a question? Mindy, did you raise your hand? Yeah. Um, two questions. One, I love your use of the word sturdy. And can you talk more about what makes a sturdy painting sturdy? And can you also talk more about the relationships that you mentioned earlier? Like what were some of the threads that you saw and how did they evolve in your mind over looking, looking, looking through the images? Right. Um, you know, the, the word sturdy, um, uh, you know, I, uh, I went to when I went to graduate school. I studied with William Bailey, and he always said to me that if you have um, kind of the ABCs, you know, like this, you know, this is formalist talk. Okay, this is I'm a formalist. Um, if you have your ABCs kind of in in place, the painting can support you know any nonsense or fantasy, or whatever. And he always talked about um, Van Eyck. Yeah, John Van Eyck, he could put anything he wanted in his, he could put, you know, 
a peacock, six cups, 22 pearls, you know, a silken gown. But the, the underlying, the underpinning structure of the painting was sturdy, okay? It, it could, it could, you know, it could support um, anything that I could imagine. And um, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not real keen on, this is gonna sound kind of funny, um, loosey goosey paintings. Do, do, do you know, I like a painting that um, delivers. And then if I go out for lunch and I come back, it will deliver again, that it, it has, um, has a, a kind of, now there's lots of paintings that, that we see that go off like firecrackers and then they've spent, it, mm -hmm. you know? And it's not that that can't, be, that can't be exciting. It's just not what I look for in painting. It, I'm not saying don't do it. I'm not saying it, it's not valuable. It's just not, not where my heart lies. I, I like their paintings. When I go to the Met, I've been going to the Met for you know, 30, 40 years. And I still go and I'm still surprised. You know, they have, their legs are that long. So that's what I mean by, by sturdy, okay? And um, I don't think there's a, a work that I chose that I wouldn't have put into that category, that they have a kind of strength to them. Um, and then they have this other thing. Then as for the connection, you know, like going through it again, 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 again. Um, you know, it, it was a slow kind of, um, I mean, I, I don't know how many times I flicked through it, do, do you know? Um, but I just sort of, it, it kind of, it kind of started to have its own life, you know? You know, two butterflies and two heads and a goofy house, do, you know, da 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 You know, so it started to, um, it started to come together. Um, and that got, got really excited. And I have to tell you that there were paintings that, that, in, that were with me through this whole process that I finally had to ask to leave. And again, not because they weren't terrific paintings, but they weren't supporting this, um, this thing, you know, that, that, you know, that began and took on, a, you know, I was directing it, but it, it began to kind of take on a life of its own. You know, um, if if you if you get that, I mean, if you get what I mean, um, I I really appreciated that. I thought the show was one of the more integrated shows that I've seen. That it struck me sort of like a symphony, where you could see all the different parts, uh, you could hear them all coming in, uh, but they also, as a whole, did something more than just the sum of the parts. Yeah, you know, that's why painters are so good. <laughs> Because they, they're, they're, um, they're used to looking. Do, do you know what I mean? In a kind of, in a weird way, non-judgmental way. Just, I'm always looking for relationships, and I'm trying to, um, I'm trying to make those connections without saying good, bad. Mm -hmm. Is it frozen? Seems like it's frozen. Can you still hear us, Kyle? It's like your connection dropped. Yeah, I think something happened. She said the word bad. <laughs> yeah, that was slightly, slightly ominous there. Yes. <laughs> uh, should pop up in a second. Let me check the participants. Oh, there she is. Ah, there. I just, you just do, went, went away. I'm sorry. Did we run out of time or something or? No, we were just commenting on the irony and the last words you said was bad and then your screen went away. <laughs> <laughs> bad. <laughs> <laughs> but um, what else, what else can we talk about this show? Well, I, I had um, a comment about, um, if I may, Oh yeah. Um, about uh, talking about a, a sturdy um, painting. Uh, for me personally, one of the the paintings that I spend the most time with. Um, well, I'll try to anyway because it was hectic between having. But anyways, I was meeting this painting, and I think um, uh, for me personally, 
uh, that was a good example of what a sturdy painting is. That it has like it, good can you put bones. It huh? Can you put it up? Um, Anthony, can you uh, um, put it up? It's the, uh, uh, I believe the, the cranes. Are they cranes, Mindy? Yes, I'll put it up in just a moment. Okay. So um, I found myself spending a lot of time with that one because it has that playfulness yet sturdiness and it has good composition too. So your eye keeps moving around in the painting um, over and over, which is something I found interesting. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it still has that fantasy, but yet figurative work and uh, playfulness, but also a seriousness. So it, it's just, it has that, that balance in that. Uh, that's nice. Yeah, that's that support. Nice. So, um, and then like, uh, if, you, if you start looking closely to the painting, there's uh, certain areas where like the heads or the wings of the uh, of the cranes and the, and the dancers sort of blend together, and it, it's like you may not know exactly where the head starts or ends, or maybe it looks like one of the dancers has wings. But mm. it, if you if you look closer, maybe it's just like a wind behind or in front or the animal flying. So I think it has sort of all of those elements that no, that we tend to like in a picture where it's mystery, enchantment and kind of like like a, a sense of wonder to it, but still grounded in, in reality and uh, uh, having a, a, a structurally sound painting. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. That's nice. I'm trying to think, um, you know what a nice painting to look at after that painting um, is Scott's It's Hard to Outrun. Because mm -hmm. Mindy's is very lush. And very romantic. And and Scott's painting, and I love the two together. I remember really thinking they, they would be best friends. Um, let's see. Anthony, can you put that up? Is that possible? Yeah, it's it's so it's so spare. Do, do you know what I mean? You can almost um, you know feel the, the temperature on in the desert. And yet it, it, it's, I think this is a terrific painting. I think it's, I think it's just like a cuckoo, cuckoo painting. But that's next to Mindy's lush, fluid, kind of Rubenesque almost, you know, spinning. Um, they, they seem to make, make a good kind of, um, you know, counterpoint to each other, right? Um, what else? Who else, who else should we talk about? Who else wants their paint? When, when it, people who have paint, who are here, who have paintings in the show, let's hear from them. Hello. <clears throat> Denise Ernest. Hi. If you talk about my painting, that would be great. <laughs> you know, I have, since I didn't. Ah, there it is. Good. I love that. You talk, you tell us about it and then we'll talk about it. Tell me. Sure. Well, um, I just have um, a, a deep interest in um, murdered and missing indigenous women. And I have a women series that I have a bunch of paintings that are connected to it. But this one was special to me. Um, actually, there are, are 116 handprints on the, the canvas. You just can't see them all because they, you know, made a buildup of hands. And are they, uh, hands? are they your hands? They are actually my daughter's family and my and my husband's hands. Okay. So um, it took quite a while to get 116 on there. Um, I made a stencil of everybody's hand. Um, but um, I wanted it to be um, sensitive to Native American people. Um, I don't claim to be a Native American. I do have some ancestry, um, but uh, that's what's you know, sort of piqued my interest. But all the elements are important to Native American people or the original people is how we should really talk about them. So the buffalo hide, the deer skin, um, there's ghost beads on there, which are very spiritual. 
um, the jingle cones and the ribbons are representative of um, the women, um, the jingle cone dancers. That's a very spiritual dance for them. Um, and so I wanted to represent that. But if you ever see a jingle um, cone dress, you'll notice they're all precisely put on there. Um, I intentionally made them not precise to um, uh, focus the attention that, um, you know, there are so many, every day I get notices of two, three, 10 women or boys or men, it doesn't matter, girls, they're all in here um, that have been stolen or taken or disappeared. Um, and it just amazes me how many there are. So I wanted it to kind of represent that it's a, such a uh, uneven um, thing compared to when we hear about other um, people who have been, you know, uh, kidnapped or murdered or human trafficked or whatever. So that's just about it, basically. Um, so did you did did you ever consider having the handprints be indigenous women? Um, not have, well. Yeah, that would have been perfect. <laughs> but do you, have, um, do you have a relationship with this community? I actually do not in in my area where I am now. I haven't lived here for very long, so. Um, I don't. Um, I actually just recently went to a powwow um, that um, did include, um, you know, uh, people from our area. So it's something, uh, yes, that I want to uh, pursue. Um, but um, for this particular painting, no. I mean, this is tricky, tricky territory, right? I, mean, I think so. <laughs> yeah. For you, for you to be taking it on. I mean, how do you, how do you? Well, I know that your people are going to say, oh, we hear that all the time. Um, my um, mother's grandmother actually was a Sioux Indian. Mm -hmm. And um, so I have a, a, an affinity for that. So all my life, I grew up learning about um, original people because of the heritage of my um, great grandmother. Um, I remember as a child going to visit her in her long, beautiful white braids. Um, and she was always fascinated with my hair because it was a color I take after my dad, who's Norwegian. Um, but if you saw pictures of my mother and her brother and some of my cousins, you would know that there is definitely that in our family um, ancestry. Uh, it just didn't come out on me. <laughs> right, right. Well, I think it's beautiful. I think it's beautiful. Well, oh, thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you for picking it. Yeah. And I appreciate that. This is the second time I've been in an Oxford show. And so that makes me feel good that two separate jurors have picked my work out. So. Right. It wasn't, yeah. It wasn't a fluke. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty cool. Not a fluke. Um, thank you so much. Yeah. No, thank you for this, for telling us about it. Um, anyone else? Who else is here? Yeah. Um, Jane Sitch. Hi. Hi. <laughs> and thank you for picking my piece, which what? is yeah, this, um, yeah. facing Earth's upheaval. Oh, I love this. Yeah, this is. This is... <laughs> and, and I have um, uh, quite a bit of my work in recent years has been around the theme of climate change and also sometimes wars and gun violence and stuff. And the thing that I find is I I always try to figure out how do you take really difficult subjects that are unpleasant to focus on and find a way to invite the viewer in to grapple with it for a little bit. And so for me, like on this one, um, some of the things that happened was you can see there's a globe in kind of in the middle towards the lower right. And it's like, I thought, you know, a globe, it kind of says, okay, we're talking about the earth, but it doesn't engage. And so that's where the world egg popped up. And so the little world egg in the front is sort of like, um, what's going to happen to this poor little world? Is it going to get fried? 
is it going to find a way to fly away and adapt? I mean, what, what's going to happen? And so um, that's where I think playfulness often can include an invitation into uncomfortable material. And, um, and then some of it is just, I have a fondness for animals and birds and sort of iridescent paint. And so they all just kind of found their place in it. Nice, nice. Yeah. I always think it's good to put animals in paintings because people believe animals, you know? <laughs> good point. Yeah, it's like, why would an animal lie to you? Um, <laughs> I think I use them like, and when I make put an animal in my painting, it's like the chorus. In case you, you know, like if you're watching a Shakespearean play or something, they always have a chorus that tells you what's going on in case you got lost. Mm -hmm. you know, like they they will go, oh no, and you think, oh, this is, this is terrible. So I I like I like animals because you believe them. So it's it's good to have animals. You know, yeah, and they, they're like the guides. Yeah. Yeah, and then it's it's tricky, you know. But I liked I liked that your animal is is funny yet um, honorable. To like, there's a kind of dignity to him even in his silliness. To, and yes. that's a hard line, you know. It's my favorite line, but it's a hard line to walk. And so I I, I really loved that. And you know, I I don't I don't I mean I I'm a storyteller from you know the get go, but. Um, I, I don't I don't usually you know look to, you know like for specific stories like we were just looking at the the indigenous hand um, and you know I'm sure I looked at the title but I didn't I didn't know that that's what Denise Denise Denise's work was was about I didn't know that it had this layer but um, that's okay. Do, do you know, like, I don't, I don't, I love hearing your story, Jane, but your, your painting's not kind of responsible for, for it. Do, do, you know, mm -hmm. there's, a, there's an, um, in both yours and Denise's, there's, there's a kind of add up that gives you a sense mm -hmm. of something that's not, not so very specific. And I think the more right. specific um, the message is, then it's, then for me, this is just for me then for me, it's, it's really out of painting's hands. Do, do you know what I mean? You need to I, be- I think I do. I like for my, my paintings, that one of the things I always want to have in it is a place of the unknown and mystery. Sure. Do you know what I just went to see and I, 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 I'm, I'm still trying to recover and stop ruining paintings. I went to see the Robert Coldscott exhibition. Do you guys know him? Yeah. Yeah. I almost fell over backwards. It's, you know, I, I came back to my studio and, and thought, Jesus, what the hell am I doing in my studio? And, and they're very political. He, he was a black um, artist from California and, and they're, they're spectacular paintings and there's message up the Wawu, you know, there's mm -hmm. um, plenty of um, stuff. And I got it, you know, there it was, but then there was this other thing that, that happened as well, that if the other thing hadn't happened, I wouldn't have been as interested in the work. I just, mm -hmm. that's, you know, that's, that's me. This, this, the story itself um, isn't enough. And I, I like this, Jane, because it, it's fine to hear your story. Um, what did Matisse say? Painters should just cut out their tongue. <laughs> Shut up. Um, and yeah. Anyway, but it was. It's nice to. It's nice to hear your concerns. It's nice to be. But your painting is smarter than that. Do you, Do you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Yes, it's more than that. If you can, there's a reason why they say, uh, you know, that uh, image has much more power than a word. You know that it's like. Um, if it can be held in words or in stories, it may be too small. Well, or it may be, if it can be held in words, maybe it should stay in words. To, yes, to, yeah. Painting, painting can do something that, that writing can't do and writing can do something that painting can't do. You know, it's yes, like- right, um, yeah. So if, if what you wanna speak is in painting is, 
um, then let the painting painting do it. But I, I really I really love this. I love I love these these paintings. Good for you. Yes. Yeah, so anybody else? Anybody else wanna? Catherine, I have a, I have another animal in my painting. So <laughs> where is it? Let me see. It's um titled Who's There? Wait, hang on. Show me, show me, show me, show me, show me. The dog with a there you go. Oh, that was <laughs> That was such a mysterious painting. I love this painting. Thank you. <laughs> so, that's so funny. I could, I could, I just, I just thought, what a goofy painting. Um, <laughs> you know, the dog is, is tucked away in that corner and he's making eye contact with me. I love that, you know, so he's inviting me in instantly. I'm in this painting, come and join me. Um, I love the, the journey I have to go to, to get to the dog. Um, and I love the, the the big diagonal that you put in. And then there's this kind of um, marvelous, almost like fearful porter handling of the paint, you know. Um, yeah, it's it's a terrific painting. It's it's a goofy painting. Um, I think the narrative, you know, I sort of refer to my painting sometimes as creative nonfiction, that it always is something that's really, you know, that's where I live. Um, uh, so it's a place I'm very familiar with. But the narrative in the moment, the dog is um, very anxious and has a lot of social anxiety. Um, <laughs> stuff, stuffed into a triangle. I mean, yes. <laughs> of course um, he's anxious. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, it's a story, um, you know, that we all experience in a new place with new people. And I thought it was sort of a universal um, yeah. moment. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I, I think it's terrific painting. And do, do you know, and, and it's all very clear. It feels anxious, feels nuts, do, do you know? Yeah. <laughs> but, but it's really, I, I'd love to see this in, in, you know, when I was looking at the image and when I'm looking at the image now, it feels beautifully painted. But, you know, this is the mad thing about looking at images on, on computers. You have no sense of, of the making of them, do, do you know? I bet it's like I bet it's like online dating, do, do you know. <laughs> yeah, but, but when you're standing next to them and you can, you know, actually how it moves moves your eye. Um, but I, I I really I really Catherine I really liked this painting. You know, one one of the things I don't know from an artist and they forget the narrative or even you know take the dog out or whatever. But the use of whites always um, holds my attention as an artist and how to blend the whites to make color of whites. And, you know, whether it's a snow scene or, um, you know, th this white wall kind of thing, but um, it's something that I like to try and I don't know if I'm love, good or bad love, at it. You love Mirandi? <laughs> do, do I'm love, sorry? Do you love Mirandi? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Mr. Cream, he put, it's like he pours cream on, on everything, you know, I like, I like, like that quality, you know, kind of. So you had mentioned Fairfield Porter. What I thought. Do you know him? I, I vaguely. I mean, I think I've probably seen a work or two. But I, I, you know, the thing about Fairfield Porter is most of his paintings are like domestic home scenes. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Um, he would be really into the 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 wood of the rail to the white of the spindles. Do, do you know, that would be, mm -hmm. he he didn't miss those things or the family dog. <laughs> um, I mean, I love I love Fairfield Porter, um, but he he he's there's a particular thing. Do, do you know, like if you're if you're hanging out with your pal and you know them as an artist, and you go into the, a museum, you know what they're gonna get all gooey about. Do, do you know what I mean? Right. Um, you know what's yeah. I have a friend who loves Chardin, and I've known this woman for forty years. And now I love Chardin, but in the beginning, it's like, oh, give me a break. And <laughs> so, and she now likes Renoir, so it's it's a trade-off. Right, <laughs> you informed one another. Yeah, we 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 did. We did. Anybody else? This is this is a fun thing. This is fun. Does anybody else want to talk about their painting? Mm. Well, that's a st study note. Is anybody raising their hand? Okay, Ruby. Uh, hi. Yes, I hi. just want to say, 
Um, thank you so much for this opportunity. It was such an honor. Oh, um, thank you. <laughs> oh, this is great. Do you love um, Welliver? Uh, I don't know who that is. Okay, look up Neil Welliver. He did a lot of, you know who else did a lot of um, reflection in puddles? Um, uh, um, David Hockney, do you know his? Um, the name sounds familiar. But... Yeah, yeah, no, this is gonna be a real treat for you because you're gonna say, oh, my people, my people. <laughs> but, but um, and you know who else did one? Another person who did a lot of reflections in pool puddles is um, Peter Doig, D-O-I-G. Yeah. Um, so basically, like, since this is my first time, like, doing uh, one of these, I found it, like, so fascinating when I went in there and I saw all of the paintings hung up, like, all the different connections that there is between all of the pieces, um, those that I hadn't seen or noticed before. And I just, I thought that was very interesting. Um, also, I would love to like hear your advice as like someone who's like just starting to get into all of this. All of, are you, are you um, in school? Are you in school? Yes, I'm a high school uh, senior. I just turned 18. Oh my God. So what, what, are, you, what are you gonna do when you get out of high school? Um, I'm planning to go to college to study art as part of my education. As part of, I mean, are you going to go to an art school or are you going to go to? Uh, I'm going to like both an art school. I'm going to dual degree, hopefully. You're going where? I'm going to dual degree, hopefully, like do both art and do writing. Okay. Do you know what schools you're thinking of? Um, yes, I have like... <laughs> Thank you, Mindy. I have um, Smitha Tufts on my list, Brown RISD. Um, I have a bunch of schools on my list. What a Brown RISD. <laughs> um, that's a really hard program to get into, but it's like my dream program. It's like if you could go to Brown and also go to RISD at the same time and mix those passions together in order yeah. to create art. Yeah, that would be great. <laughs> yeah. No, do that. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, that, that's oh, geez, eighteen. This is this is spectacular. Um, mm. yeah. um, I can also explain like my thought process while making this. Sure. Um, so what I did is that basically I was outside on a school day and like I saw my peers walking by and it was like just in between a time where. I had felt so sad and like I was finally feeling so relieved. And so I looked at the world around me the, at the school that I've been to for like five years. and was like, whoa, I don't imagine, I don't remember ever seeing it in this light. And so I like just like laid down on the floor and like took a picture in the um, puddle of the scenery around me and made it slightly darker than the rest of the painting because it's like my different perspective on how I view the school and how I view the world around me depending on my mental state. Okay, that's great. It's a wonderful painting. It's really wonderful. Um, you know, it, yeah, it's, it's a terrific painting, but check those, check those painters out because um, you're, you're going to feel a kinship to them. Mm -hmm. That kind of crazy flip. Um, yeah, there, there's, uh, you know, you're in for such a treat. I wish I was, I wish I was 18 and knew no one, you know, <laughs> these artists, so I could have the thrill of what it felt like to stumble on them. You know, remember that, you know, you, you discover a painter, you know, like every five minutes. Um, and it was so exciting. Good for you, Ruby, but go to, go to, go to RISD. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Anybody else? No, I can't see you all. How did, um, any other questions you guys wanna? How, so where are you? Are you all like in Pennsylvania in this Oxford town? No, you are? Mm -hmm. You have to wait. 
Delaware here. Delaware? I'm in Maryland. Maryland. I'm in Oregon. Oregon? Mm -hmm. How did you find out about this? Um, I was actually, um, I've been kind of, I think mostly doing a lot of just creative work and during the pandemic, I really kind of sunk myself into creative work and wasn't looking to do any kind of juried shows or trying out for anything like that. And it had been quite some time since I tried anyway. So this year I decided I'm gonna try again and put myself back out there. And I was scrolling through, um, I think something online, I can't even remember where I found it, but I saw this and I looked at it and I thought, well, that actually sounds fascinating. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my hat in the ring, so to speak. And uh, I, I was not expecting it, honestly. <laughs> I was I was pleasantly surprised. I, I got very excited. I was like, oh wow, this has been my first jury show in quite some time that I got into. And um, you know, it's somebody who's who's in their 50s who's really just reinventing their art career as they're going forward. Um, that was sort of a you know, one of the I have to tell you, one of the nice out. one of Go the ahead. nice things, what about one of the nice things, you know, I'm old. I'm old. One of the nice things I've noticed is that um, there's a kind of appetite for older women artists. Who knew? <laughs> yes, and I know a lot of my work is, is, I have very traditional work. I have very unconventional work. And as I get older, I find myself leaning more towards the unconventional stuff. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, I, I, I threw the spider in because I thought, well, you know, it's different let's just see what happens. And, you know, I'm, I have a very scientific background to my work. My dad was an entomologist. I'm Native American in my family. Thank you, Denise, for your piece, by the way. I wanted to personally say that was, that was lovely and I really enjoyed it. Um, so there's a, a mix of the spiritual and the science that sort of comes in together with my work. And I was like, well, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just going to throw it in there and, and see what happens. And um, again, thank you because it was uh, it was a very pleasant surprise. It just made my entire month. <laughs> so. You know, when I first um, when I first got a computer, this is years ago. Um, I started to keep track of all the things that I applied for. You mm -hmm. know, I'd send I'd send slides. I'd apply for shows, and everything. and at the end of that year, I had sixty three rejections. Mm -hmm. so, six, so I stopped keeping track because that was like that was that was the hard pile of crap to step over and feel okay about but you know this stuff is you know you just have to just yeah and I, I've had a lot of rejection I know and all we all have in one fashion or another and you know for for quite some time it was kind of like oh you know do I suck that bad <laughs> I can say that you know because I went through a period of time where I was like eh, you know and then yeah. I started realizing no that's not that's not what this is about. What this is about is I'm, I'm learning something I'm, as I'm going. So maybe this piece didn't get you know, chosen. Well, why not? And then it was nice to be able to sometimes go back to the jurors and say, hey, what, why didn't make this just make it? Can I, can I get some input? What were you seeing? So I, I turned it into just this huge learning experience. Mm -hmm. And I found that in some cases, I actually gained more value from by not getting it, entering yeah. the show, but not getting it. So it was like, oh, so this is what this person is seeing, or maybe this was something I missed. And oh, you just, you know, I'm sort of putting those pieces together in my head. And um, I think honestly, being able to look at it that way made it much easier for me to enter shows and be more experimental and try different things. I mean, I've been a fiber artist, maybe, I don't know, I think I'm going on. 13 or 14 years now, it hasn't been very long, but the medium pulled from everything else that I do, which is, you know, photography, painting, watercolor, um, you know, sculptural work. I've been doing bead work. I've been doing wood carving. I, I just, all of these things that I've tried throughout my lifetime of being an artist, um, just sort of all of a sudden culminated into fiber art. <laughs> and it was sort of like, oh, everything fits here. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it was, um, I guess for, you know, anybody who's new and just sort of coming out into getting into journey shows or trying out for them, don't be discouraged. Just look at it as a learning curve. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Mindy? Um, can you talk more about knitting together a community of artists and finding a place in it and that whole project of putting your own career forward but making more room for other people too at the same time like elevating the whole the yeah. whole rather than com like competing and having it be at each other's expense yeah do, do you know when 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 i went to graduate school um do, do you know there was always always a pal who could come into my studio you know go get a beer um do, do you know that it was always always someone to have a conversation with and and i think the year i got out of graduate school was probably the loneliest year of my entire life i mean it was just the hardest year i i lived as an artist no nobody gave a shit about um no i mean why would they about the, right. the what was yeah. going in my studio and i had i had been in this you know I, when I went to Yale, and so the people that were coming into my studio were spectacular artists, do you know? And I took it completely for granted. And then when I got out, I was just in this kind of desert, right? And um, you know, I I moved to I moved to New York. I I reconnected with some people that I'd gone to school with. Um, you know, there's a billion artists here. You know, so you you start to kind of build. Um, a community and um so someone could come into my studio you know when i went to a a, a, a scary opening you, did you guys ever go to scary openings and you you stand you know i would go to them and no one would talk to me oh no you know because i didn't no, know i know i know yeah, yeah. You think, i can't do this so you had you had your pal come with you and then you you float around the gal you know the opening and when you got dissed enough times you you float back to your friend you, you know so you could build courage so you start to build um you know you'd go to galleries that had shows that you know you liked i mean i love this gallery in new york steve harvey stephen harvey and when i go there it feels like i'm going to my local bar you know like there's steve's great i love what he steven's great i love what he shows i love who he shows and there's usually somebody that comes in and out but it, it's it's part of a community and so you, you you know you start to slowly build that then you know someone's um someone's in a group show and um the curator comes over to your place and they're looking at your work and they say you know we're we're putting together a show on people who put butterflies in paintings do you know anybody and you say yeah because you're in this community do, do you know what i mean so you start to you start to kind of help each other and then you know when somebody gets something that you didn't you know you go in the bathroom and you say you know fuck them achievement you know you you say all that stuff that you feel bad and then you get over it do you know you get over it or you turn or it starts to you know turn bitter you just i can't stress how um important community is and it's it's such a a, a tricky thing because artists spend most of their time alone and and there's it's so competitive do, do you know there's um, so it's, it's, it's a tricky thing, but you know, you just build slowly, you find someone that you, um, you know, if it's just one person and then maybe it's two people and maybe you get a crit group together or a drawing group together and you just kind of take care of each other. And I, I think that's, you know, that's, that's why I'll never, I would, I would never want to leave New York because it's, it's, it was probably easier to build a community here then it would be, you know, in a smaller town, you know, where, there, where there's not so much going on. So it's wonderful that this alliance got put together in Oxford, do, do you know? And it's wonderful that, you know, Miguel, who was saying that there's just terrific artists there in the, in the area? I was. Yeah, I mean, that's great. You have a, you have a clubhouse. Um, yeah. yeah. And we're just a very small community, you know, it's, um, but now we have outdoor art on the buildings and, um, you know, people are coming as a destination rather than, you know, just passing through. So um, 
it's it's all good. We've grown so much since uh, you know in the fourteen years we've been around. That's amazing. But, uh, and changes, I think, um, the landscape of the of the town. So um, yeah. yeah, it's important. Art and music. Yeah, very important. And Kyle, we do have a question in the chat from Christine Romano. Um, yeah, I'm not, I I don't want to answer that. Okay. <laughs> I, didn't, I wasn't um I wasn't keen keen on giving prizes you know again but um yeah Christine I think, I think it's just a, a proud mother I, ignore it please I I, I we'll, we'll move on please <laughs> did did you ask the question wait who asked the question no I think my mom my mom's just trying to um be oh. a proud mother and she's all excited about oh, oh I love that, that. I love I that. I love that. I think just totally. It, she's just being a little, yeah. She's just being a mom, typical mom move, right? Um, yeah. Let's let's ignore it and and continue on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did it because your your child is the very very best of all. Of them. <laughs> just all. Of them. <laughs> mom support is the best. Yes, mom support. Any other questions or what, what else, what else should we? I sort of disagree with you about the, the words and the, and the images, um, just what we did today, people explaining where these, where their art came from and the, sort of the backstory, um, you know, makes you, and I think anytime I talk to anybody that displays in our gallery and find out more about where they're coming from, it really does make a difference in how you view the, the painting. Mm -hmm. Whether that's good or bad, I, I don't know, but. Um. Yeah, you know, the, anything that I say, you know, um, no, it's just, it's just me, it, you know, it's not, there are no rules or, and, and you know, I have, I have friends who are artists that won't say a word about what they paint, and I have friends who are artists who won't shut up. It, you know, so it's, it, it's, there's not a good thing or a bad thing. Right. Can you say again the name of your teacher who talked about the ABCs of painting? What's that? Um, that was William Bailey. You guys know William? Yeah. He just, he recently, he recently died. Well, a year or so ago. Yeah. <coughs> Also, more about the appetite for older women. <laughs> I have no idea where that came from. Um, but there are a lot of, um, you know, women of, uh, you know, certain ages that are, are getting a lot of attention and that just didn't happen. You know, for women to get any attention in, in our field, um, that's been, you know, a problem, but, you know, Judith Lynn Harris, um, Kathy Bradford. I, I mean, um, who, who's the, I mean, on and on and on. Um, they're, they're just a lot of attention being paid um, to women and that, uh, you know, older women. And that's, that's thrilling, you know, that's thrilling. Question, do you think that's because um, more older women are patrons and are collectors where it used to be more the pocketbook was more controlled by the men or do you think it's um, across the board? You know, I think one of the things that happens is, you, you know, like artists paint for a long time, they don't get any attention, they have, um, but they're, they're working, right? Yep. And so, you know, some, someone walks into um, somebody's studio and they've, they, they've been, this is the real deal, do, do you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and why do I think oh, I, a million reasons, I guess, but I think that there's, there's um, an appetite for the thing that we talked about, sturdy painting. And, um, you know, these women are sturdy, sturdy painters. But, you know, there's also an appetite, you, you know, there are there are dealers and collectors and gallerists who go to um, graduate students 
studios, right? You know, like to to find the next thing that's the next one coming out the shoot. Um, so it's you know both ends. But there's been a, like I say a lot of attention for women artists. You know, Joan Snyder. Um, do you guys do you guys know June Leaf? She's ninety three. She, she she paints every every day. I mean, she's a sculptor, um, but she works every day. And she's, you know, she's had a spectacular career, um, you know, and it, it, it just is building and building. Um, I have a quick comment. Um, I think that one of the reasons why um, we're sort of reaching out to uh, women artists in general is because historically uh, they've been ignored or they're the, they have become the kind of artists who are behind um, a man in, in some ways. So I think people are realizing the mistake that they've made um, by doing things like that. And I think the younger people who are coming in places of influence um, in the art world are realizing that it's time to give these women who are or were pioneers, give them the chance to get the credit that they deserve because for so long, it's been uh, very uh, male-centric, um, which is not uh, an art problem only, that's a general sort oh, of yeah. patriarchal <laughs> problem. But, uh, and I think, uh, you know, uh, people like uh, Xers and millennials are, uh, are becoming, are turning into positions of power and influence and leadership. And we, generally speaking, are trying to be more inclusive of um, just everyone in general. Um, but if you ask a historian, they're, they're gonna have a hard time answering you in which art period are we in because it's very pluralistic. It's about just pretty much everyone. And then um, there's smaller microcosms of movements and ideas and groups and thoughts and schools and, and things like that. So it's kind of like, it's just we're all trying to collectively make sure that the uh, credit is given to where credit is due. Right. And, yeah. yeah. I, I think it's I think being more inclusive is is terrific. You know, I think it's terrific. I'm I'm I think we should make room at the table, but I have a lot of trouble with um, villainizing, you know, Western, you know, the tradition of Western um, painting. You know, I love Rembrandt. I love Goya, I love, I mean, you know, the, the white um, Western heroes are still my heroes, but I want room, more room at the table, you know? I don't want yeah. it for someone at the table so, um, so that I can, you know, yeah. me, me and my tribe can sit at the table. I, don't, yeah. I want a bigger table. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when I've been teaching, I'm, I'm astonished by how little, you know, young painters know about those painters. You know, they know a lot about painters from maybe mid-century on, but not, not earlier than that. Um, yeah, but, you know, I don't want them to be all that's there. Yeah. Well, I, um... We are uh, over about an hour and 15 minutes. If so, if there's any last thoughts or question, and so we can um, try to wrap up our juror talk for the day. Um, is there anything that anyone else um, wants to quickly say? Thank you. And um, congratulations, everyone. Yeah.